what a finish. It's your boy, Eduardo Jackson, CEO, founder, creator of the Cinema Draft and the Draft Stream Alpha Test Games. And I'm, I'm a little breathless right here. Look at these scores. Look at how tight they were. Man, I mean, it almost would have come down to tiebreakers coming to play. And this is a reminder. Please fill out your tiebreakers next week. Especially since we'll be playing for real money. Um, as I was going through uh, entering the scores, first Rotten Tomatoes, then Metacritic, then the IMDb user score, it really did come down to the IMDb user score. There, After I filled in the 9.7, 9.7 for The Last Dance. People love that show. After I put in 9.7 for The Last Dance, Ring Balls had a slight, a very slight but narrow lead. But as we went down, going through the rest of the IMDb scores, Gamble 24x7, the Cinema Draft all-time money leader, just crept back into the lead. And man, that was an exciting finish. Woo! And and I, I think the new scoring's working out. I'm, I'm digging it, uh, even though... The Hallmark Channel, once again, kind of gets frozen out. At least this time, every program had an IMDb user score. So, so that's cool. So it's not like we had flat bold across the row. So this is, this is good. This is a good start. This is the kind of action I like to see. You know, game theory kind of you know, bunching up. I mean, look at that. I mean, less than two points separated first from second. <laughs> point zero two. <laughs> sorry, Henry G. Uh, sorry, the Roan. Uh, you know, long time cinema draft guest of the pod. Point zero two was the difference between. Look at it. Our point. Our our value points per thousand is identical. That's it. Man, look at look at this. And look at when you look at value. Ring balls actually got more value out of his call sheet than the winner did. But look, I mean. You you have no idea as as a game maker as a games maker, uh, this really makes me happy. You know, seeing the strategy in place. Sorry, mom, draft mom, it didn't quite work out for her. But yeah, let's let's take a look at these call sheets real quick. The winning call sheet right here, and I kind of mused on the pod, and also in just general discussion that I thought documentaries would kind of carry the day and. I was right. Last Dance, one, two, get three The Last Dance actors. And moving forward, I'm at, you'll see some changes in the call sheet for next week, which we'll go over real quick, how we're actually changing actor to cast. Because as we delve more into TV, we have the potential of reality characters coming on you know they aren't exactly actors although we know a lot of that is staged but um but yeah but of the cast he had three cast members from the last dance dikembe no 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 mutombo michael jordan phil jackson he had one two he had three cast members from the longest war and at, which is available on showtime on demand right now i think it airs tonight this is Monday, happy 420 day for those of you who who like to commune with the earth, <laughs> be one with the greenery. Uh, but yeah, it, it, actually, I think it, it aired, actually, no, it aired last night. It aired last night, and it was available as early as 9 p.m. Pacific time or 12 a.m. Eastern on, uh, on Saturday night slash Sunday morning. <clears throat> so I actually want to check that out. It's about the Afghanistan war. It, ha it has been our longest war. We've been there since what? 2001 so yeah it's been forever anyways uh and other music i mean he he actually had and i think i covered this in the recap he actually had all his cast members were from documentaries except for a black af which kind of came through down the stretch look at that uh look at that uh 6.4 it's from humble beginnings i think it was as low as a 3.3 or 4 something Crept up to a 6.4. It was the second? Uh, the one. Oh, okay. It's middle of the pack. But still, the IMDb user score definitely bailed it out. Because critics, man, y'all just don't understand. Anyways, Black AF was fun AF. So that was the winning score. 
because he was definitely documentary heavy. And Ring Balls in second place. I mean, <clears throat> he had the right idea. Six actors, seven actors from documentaries. Seal in the Spades, very strong choice. But what sank him? Oh, what sank him was endings, beginnings. I mean, just just think if he had if he had put in. I mean, I mean, he still had six hundred left over, right? So he probably could have gotten a headliner from where else? What else could he have gotten one from? I, honestly, anything would have been better than that. To gain two points, you could have gotten a headliner from Bettenrausch, aka Rising High, because that one I believe seventy point one zero headliner ninety eight point one four. Yeah, that could have. That could have been your difference right there. Endings, beginnings, just ended and be- I mean, it was always an anchor around that call sheet. But great effort, ring balls. Next week, we plan for money, baby. Let's see who will win, you know, $35 for first, 15 for second. And and then we'll take a look at my call sheet since I did squeak it out by .02. Actually, we'll, actually, we'll compare the two call sheets. Sorry, brown baby, mom, you lost this week. Not what you see here. It was just way too... Not enough documentary. And looks like too much Benton Roush. Uh, but my call sheet, I really was leaning into Black AF. Didn't quite perform as I'd wanted, but still good enough by point oh two. And then one, two, three, four, five, six documentary players. And then Sergio. Let's see, what was the difference between mine and... The Rones call sheet. Endings, beginnings. That's it. Three endings, beginnings. Kept him out of third. Sorry to this man. <laughs> Kiki Palmer style. But endings, beginnings was an anchor around your neck. So great job, everybody. Ah, this You have no idea what this data does for me. It's very exciting. Thank you so much. Uh, let's take a quick look at next week's call sheet or next week's dra- uh, talent pool. Drag it over here. All right. Uh, so here are our new 10 titles. You might see some some slight adjustments in in the, the layout. I keep refining it as we go along. It's now cast and cast type. We have the release dates right up here for you and release dates right up here as well. And the call sheets, I put this in blue now, you know, neon blue to stand out. We need those tiebreakers. We got awfully close, too close for comfort this week with tiebreakers. Uh, I anticipate we should have a handful of more people next week so or this week. So tie, ties may come into play now that we know what the strategy is. And in speaking of that strategy... Just looking over some of these salaries, I have now adjusted. Now, documentaries are are our most important property in this game. The highest one on the slate are the Beastie Boys. Seventeen, Everyone loved the Beastie Boys, so we started them off at 17000 I'm still a little bit leery about putting anything into the 20000 category this week because there doesn't seem like, like any surefire hits or surefire documentary hits. This Beastie Boy story is on Apple TV Plus, which not everyone has. So I just kind of keep that in mind when you're filling out these call sheets. Our our Hallmark entry this week, Matchmaker Mysteries, a fatal romance. Just keep in mind, Hallmark may not always get covered too tightly. And I'm trying something different this week. So as you see here, the release date is 427. If you notice, that means this is releasing on Monday. Trying to add a little extra drama to this. Now, with Netflix, they release their programs at midnight of of the day in question. So I assume this will come out at midnight, uh, late Sunday night, early Sunday, an uh, early Monday morning. So what that means is that it may have time to get some user scores. It may have time to get some critic scores. I'm experimenting to see with how timeliness plays into the gameplay to see if this will add an extra sweat. Never have I ever actually sounds like a really fun, like a really fun title uh, produced by Mindy Kaling, uh, co-created by Mindy Kaling, actually. Uh, Seems, I saw the trailer, seems extremely cute. And I don't know. It'll It'll be interesting to see if, 
if this can actually work moving forward, if we can squeeze in Monday premieres and still have it logically count as far as our box office report goes. All right. And then also this one debuts on Thursday. So this actually might give some people sneak peeks. This is a documentary on the LGBTQ drag community. We're here. So, and even though this is a little lower HBO, I don't think it has as much. I haven't heard as much about it, although I'm, although I have seen some advertising for it. A lot of these salaries <clears throat> honestly go from how, ex how much exposure I've seen to it. And, you know, we're human, you know, we don't have an algorithm in place. We don't have that kind of money yet, but I will say I do see a lot of everything. I watch the panoply of channels and platforms. You know, all I have all these platforms except for Quibi. This is gonna be interesting. This is our first Quibi offering, and it's more reality style. I think it's a series. Liza Koshi, she's a YouTube personality. I'm told so. So I priced her around here. These these, these are really tentative. Well, not tentative. These are speculative pricing for Quibi because we don't know how it's going to perform yet. And honestly, I don't think too many people are on the Quibi, so I think the user scores might be low. Hence, only 6,000 for Liza Koshi, who I think has, you know, a few million YouTube followers, something like that. Extraction, name value alone, kind of went high. Should be high profile. Looks like a perfect weekend, you know, dumb Netflix action movie that might secretly could be kind of good. I don't know. So, so, and so as you see, I, I, I priced up the BC boys documentary. Mm, this documentary is probably a little bit higher than I would have normally priced it up. We're here because as I'm seeing documentaries are starting to carry the day. And this looks like a pretty manageable slate this weekend. You can pr probably get something for everyone for what you want defending jacob because i i normally would have going into this game with my preconceptions uh as far as marketing goes and star power goes i normally would have priced this up this probably would have been somewhere in you know twelve thousand thirteen thousand maybe the teens but it's all about documentaries now you know uh apple tv plus not the widest distribution not the widest i mean despite the emmys for morning was it not morning story morning the morning show there we go despite the emmys for the morning show apple tv plus doesn't have as much cultural cachet as say disney plus or espn or, or what have you with the last dance so 8800 feels right bad education i did price up because we've been seeing ads for it for a while hbo is pretty splashy even though it's coming out on a saturday it's got huge i mean look at this cast this is this is a pretty this is a pretty strong cast and in, in the headliner to co-star area, I think it's gonna bring some sway and pro tip, there's already a user score on it. Imagine that there's seven point three, so we already know the floor is kind of high for it. So keep that in mind. Sometimes just a little bit of research will give you some insight on your game theory for the week. All right. So thanks again everybody for playing. You guys have been awesome. <laughs> wow that finish y'all that finish i'm just so proud of you guys I'm very excited uh we're playing for real money this week 50 dollars prize pool 35 dollars to first 15 dollars to second so bring your a game looking forward to seeing your call sheets get them in by thursday 6 p.m pacific time cinema draft at gmail.com make sure you share it with your boy so i can edit all right Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you all out there.